Hello guys! Lighting is a very important topic in game development and many devs, including myself, tend to overlook and postpone it until the very last moment, which, as I've been able to find during the development of Zero Grounds, is very not recommended, as it can greatly enhance the visual quality of your game and even improve the performance. In this video I'm going to show you guys how we approach lighting in our game, what techniques we use to achieve better visuals, and what we learn from our mistakes while working with lights in Unity. So if you're making your own game in this engine or planning to, hopefully it will be helpful to you as well. But first, I just want to show you the drastic difference in graphics when you use the lighting in the right way. What you see right now is our current map without any light map data, which essentially means that we did not bake lights in the engine and Unity just calculates the right lighting in real time. And this is how the same level looks with bit lights. Nothing has changed on this map apart from the lighting after I baked it. Pretty insane difference, huh? Also notice the FPS count between these two scenarios. It's quite appalling how much of a difference can baking the light map bring to your game, but it's also a rather confusing topic, especially if you're an indie dev juggling many things at the same time. You might just not have the will to dig deep into this stuff to understand how to build light effectively. But it's actually not as difficult as many may think. There are essentially three ways in which you can bake lights in Unity, but it also translates to many other game engines, so the approach is largely the same in Unreal, CryEngine and Godot. You can have real-time lighting, which essentially means that the engine calculates lighting and shadows for all objects dynamically every frame. It is very useful for dynamic objects on the map, which do not stay stationary and always need to emit correct shadows and have correct lighting calculations. Then there is baked lighting, which is calculated in the engine during the baking phase and then saved to the light map file to then be used in the game. This lighting is not intensive at all as it's been calculated before the game is played, but it does not update in real time, thus making it useless for dynamic objects. So it should only be used uh, with static objects and static lights that don't move. So if you want to have a day-night cycle in your game, for example, it's definitely not a good choice. And last, but definitely not least, is the mixed lighting mode. The beauty of it is that it uses a combination of both real-time and baked lighting methods, so that you can have the best of both worlds. Dynamic moving objects cast real-time shadows, while static objects have pre-baked and efficient shadows and lights. And this is exactly what we're using in Zero Grounds, because it fits our use case perfectly as we have a large, mostly static environment, but also many dynamically moving objects, such as characters. Another very important part of lighting in Unity is that what's called global illumination, which essentially represents non-directional lighting, simulating the bouncing of the light off of surfaces, creating more realistic visuals. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw how much of a difference global illumination makes to enhance visuals, it's unbelievable. Once you know the basics of how lighting works in Unity, the process of building them is actually quite straightforward, but you need to be extra careful to not let small mistakes stop the process, as it was in our case, where for some reason the baking process literally was taking insane amounts of time for a relatively small map. I mean, look at our map, it's not by any means the next Warzone map, plus it's in low poly, so why does Unity show me that I need to wait 4 days to build lights here? Well, I have to say, I was very relieved and embarrassed when I found out what was the issue with our level. It turns out that we had moving objects in our scene which were marked as static in Unity, which made it think that they were not moving, when in fact they were, right inside of the editor, even before I run the game. Essentially, you should mark all non-moving objects in your map as static, so that Unity knows that it can build baked lights for these objects, while all of the dynamic objects should remain dynamic, and the engine will use a different approach for them. But we accidentally marked these two wood pieces as static, Unity was stuck in a kind of an infinite loop trying to calculate baked lighting for moving objects. Yes, this can be quite frustrating. And I think the sad part is that Unity doesn't let you know if you messed up, it just keeps on showing like it's building light in forever. Obviously what we have uh, right now is not a final result and we plan to continue to learn more about lighting, but I think 
What we achieved so far is pretty decent improvement from the original state we had a couple of months ago. We're really pumped to work on Zero Grounds and I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please consider subscribing and giving this video a like if you like this content. We're going to continue making devlogs and listening to your comments. Have a nice day. Bye.